Hello everybody and welcome to the Celtic Unfit Review podcast. My name is Ryan Clifford and well it's a preview of a Bodo Glint game on Thursday, um, European Conference game which we're all kind of anticipating. Um, it's been quite a, a whirlwind since it's been drawn for Celtic fans. Um, a lot is a option not known much about them and obviously we are known by kind of results and uh, what they've had in Europe. Um, but joining me on this episode is ex-professional footballer David Weatherston. David is actually living in Norway, playing in Scotland, and also played in Norway. He'll be able to give us a report about them um, and more detailed knowledge of them. David, how's things, mate? Yeah, going well, thanks. Thanks for the welcome. As I say, mate, I appreciate you coming on because obviously back in Glasgow, we don't really see much in Norwegian football. Um, it's not on the TVs much unless it's on the European channels. So it's really a good kind of uh, podcast, obviously, for the listener and myself to get to know more about Bodo Glimp? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't, I don't think I'd ever watched Norwegian football before I, I moved here. Even like, I've got a Norwegian wife now, but even living with her in Scotland, I never I had no interest in it. So it's just since I moved here, sort of six, six years ago, coming up for six years. Um, yeah, that's when I just started getting really into it. And uh, last three years in particular, I've, yeah, not. Um, I've hardly missed a game. To be fair, at the weekend, I've been watching. Uh, I've been watching a lot of football. Um, Bode Glint. Um, I've been a big part of that with uh, the two titles in the last two years. As you say, obviously, um, you moved to Norway. How did that sort of move to Norway come about, and how did you actually get involved in the Norwegian kind of football? Actually, loving it and, and getting into it, enjoying it. Um, I mean, it was it was a personal reason. For moving here purely like my, I'd been with my girlfriend now wife for um four years we'd lived together in Edinburgh and uh, and then after that we just decided we would try something different and then um, I'd been yeah I'd, I'd been playing professional from uh, yeah 2007 when I started playing professionally I'd been at Queen's Park before that and um by the time sort of 2015, 16 came around, injuries had just, I just had so many injuries and my, yeah, my, I'd lost my pace and I just wasn't the player that I could be or wanted to be anymore. So I thought it was a good idea just to get, go out and um, start a new period of the of my life. But uh, yeah, I did play some football. I played um, locally uh, fourth tier here it's a little bit different there's a pyramid system here so it's a little fourth tier is not it's not like league two it's there's like a top tier a second tier and then there's two third tiers and then six six in the fourth tier six leagues um like regionalized so it's not the standard wasn't like quite uh, as high as um league two in scotland um probably just below that to be fair um, but yeah, I played a couple of seasons at that level, enjoyed it. But uh, as I say, I was never, I was never able to get to a level um, in my own play where I, I was like taking it super seriously. Because um, yeah, I was uh, always of the view that uh, the football was just a, a hobby. While I tried to mm-hmm. learn the language and uh, get myself uh, sorted out here, basically. As you say, is obviously uh, the language. How is the language? Learning our language is it? Language is good. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, I work in the airport over here, and uh, since I started working there, just like speaking it every day, it's made a huge difference. Like the last sort of three, four years, it's just got better and better. Um, pretty much, I mean, I'm not fluent by any means, but. Um, I can I can <laughs> I can understand Norwegian now and there's so many different dialects and stuff that are pretty difficult to get but yeah I, I'm uh, I'm on my way to to fluency shall we say it's obvious as you say is the pyramid systems and the way the football works is different from back here um because obviously obviously now the pyramid systems all change from the lower yeah. leagues and stuff it's all kind of the juniors and stuff um yeah. Did it have anything like that in Norway, or is it just us kind of set leagues and, that, and that's it? Um, nah, it's just, uh, I actually don't know if they have like amateur football uh, as mm-hmm. such. I think it, I mean, I think as far as I know, there's like, in where I live, there's I think 
seven tiers. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think in Oslo there's more. Um, like so, the, the top tier is obviously the Elite Serie, and then you've got the Obos League, and which is the second division, like the second tier, and then you've got the second division, which is the third tier with two, uh, two set. I think I think it's two leagues of fourteen, maybe or twelve. I think it's fourteen, and then the third, for, sorry, yeah, the third division, which is the fourth tier, has six of twelve, six six leagues of twelve, and then the the one below that will be. Yeah, even more ten or twelve leagues, and it just gets obviously gets wider as you go go down. And then, um, obviously, second teams are in it as well. So oh, okay. much like it's huge debate, obviously in Scotland about whether Celtic Rangers should be allowed their second teams in the pyramids. But I mean, that's just part of that is just part of the pyramid here. Uh, they're not allowed higher than the third tier, okay. um, but in that tier. Um, I think Rosenborg's second team were in it. I think they might have got relegated last year. Um, Rosenborg, definitely, I think, Volleringa as well, have a second team in the third tier. But yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's basically second teams dotted all over the place. I've played against, like, when I was playing in the fourth tier, like, we were playing against Rosenborg and Molde's second team um, quite frequently. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just, I, think it's, I think it's great for them like for the players it's a really great platform they're playing against men it's competitive football like the promotion is relegation it means something i think it's a really great platform to 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 build talent and then there's plenty of talent and there's i think uh, the opportunity to to progress uh, is is really good here as you say is um Obviously, back here now, the B teams, Sussex Rangers are in the lower league, kind of pyramid system. And, um, I was kind of a thing for it. I like it because it gives some of these guys playing against men, or not just playing against the end level, and I think they can develop better. Um, so I think sometimes maybe the development of some players at Celtic Rangers gets kind of stopped because they're not playing football. Um, obviously, you played yourself, you'll realise is. You can train all you want, but if you're not playing games and playing against decent opposition, you can't really develop training is training, but game time for me is, is massive and I think for these younger players in Norway and Scotland, they'll only get better by, by playing games. Um, and obviously, Bodo, for me, is the time for the day. For me, it's a game I'm looking forward to. Um, I know they've sold kind of players will get into that and maybe the, the recruitment might not be as good as it was well last year, but um, I'm actually looking forward to the game. I think it'll be a very attacking game. Um, what was the reaction when the draw was made in Norway? Was it or oh, Celtic or was it I think it's just Celtic? We can actually give them a game because we're in a better place now. Uh, yeah, I know. They're li- really looking forward to it. There's, there's a, um, I mean, Celtic's a big club. Bolden, I mean, there's the first time Bolden have gone into this. I know it's the, the new. Uh, new competition, but it's the first time both have gone f- this far in Europe. Um, yeah, they were really looking forward to playing Celtic, and I think uh, even just this week, the build up just following it on Twitter and uh, in the sort of local news up there as well in the papers and stuff. They, they, there's, there's big interest in it, and they're really looking forward to it. And as well, there's no other competitive games on in Norway just now, so it's literally it's, this is literally it for for uh, competitive football in Norway just now. So yeah, it's, it's a big interest, and um, I think not expectation, but definitely definitely hope that they, that they can give Celtic a good game. And um, obviously, as you say, they've lost a few players, um, but their manager's still there, and they've still got still got most of the. Most of the first eleven that were uh, that were uh, sorry, mo- most of the team that will start were there last year, so they know the system and, and it should be should be interesting. It should be attacking game, as you say. Two teams that both like to try and dominate the ball. Uh, I think Celtic will probably dominate the ball, especially at Celtic Park. But mm-hmm. um, I think Bolde will definitely not be afraid to to try and get a foot on it as well. The thing for me is um, talking about goals. I'm expecting. I like to think a lot of goals. Um, I think they're two are very attacking teams. I don't think both teams, for what I've kind of looked at Bodo and obviously Celtic this year, I don't think they'll sit back and just defend. I think it will be very attack-wise games. Um, obviously, both teams will need to defend and need to defend, but 
I don't think the two strategies for both teams will be sit back. I think it will be just trying to score goals. I don't think there will be any defensive, a lot of defensive work involved in the games. I know it's a European tie. You'll need to defend in certain parts of the game. But I think going by the two teams, the attacking formations, attacking where I play, it's going to bode well for the game. And I think it might be a good spectacle as well as it's been on TV. I think a lot of people might actually get an interest in, especially Bodo coming to Glasgow and a full Celtic Park as well. Yeah, they should. Yeah, I think uh, this. I don't know how many Norwegians will go over. There probably won't be many, to be fair. Mm. Um, I mean, it's not. It's not a big town, but it's really. It's a small place. Um, they're not. They've not got a huge support. I mean, they think the stadium. I'm not sure what the what this uh, capacity is just now. Up, up at Boulder, I think it's a, It's around like six thousand or something. So. I think you're yeah. Right. Yeah, so I mean, they won't take a lot of supporters. They will take some, and um, I think they've shown in Europe this year or last year, this season, that they've not been scared to go away from home. Uh, they went to Roma. Uh, they got a draw in Rome. Um, they they've been to uh, oh, somebody I can't even remember who was in the group. Uh, <laughs> there was a. Oh, there's a team from oh yeah, I can't even remember, never mind. It's off the top of my head. But yeah, now nah, they they um the I think Bode, I mean they've got the, they had the best defence in Norway last year, but a lot of that is built on similar to Celtic, like having the best defence in Scotland officially, it's built on having the ball and, mm-hmm. and, and sort of controlling the game. Like it's the same as same as uh, what will they do? They'll control they'll try they try and control the game and control the ball. They, they, I think what they'll do at Celtic Park, though, is they'll they'll counter attack really well. Um, it's something they did two years ago uh, in Norway when they were not favourites for the league. Um, they they just blew teams away with their counter attack, really really quick transition. Uh, I think that's something they did quite well in in Europe this year. Um, but domestically, they didn't do that last year because mm-hmm. most teams just sat deep against them, try to stop that. So um, I think. What we'll see on Thursday is Celtic controlling the ball and the Boulder quickly trying to counter on them. Um, and they're very, very good at it and something that Celtic will need to be careful of um, if they want to want to stop Boulder scoring. And as you mentioned, obviously, uh, the, they both came against Roma. Um, I know Roma might have played maybe the odd few players that weren't starting to love him, but it's still Roma and they're still... For me, they're still a top team in um, Serie A, so for, I'm not going to say an unknown team, but to me, it's the world, they're not a, like Celtic, they're not a world nation club. To go to Italy and have that result, it's probably opened a lot of people's eyes as well in Norwegian football and kind of made them be aware that some of these teams do have a lot of talented players and, um, again, it's maybe putting players in the transfer window as well to go and get bigger moves because, like you've seen, Guys like Patrick Berg moved as well, so um, maybe these games are also a, a, not a highlight in, um, in the season so far to turn up, but it might be good for these players to actually play well and get themselves maybe a better move if possible. Yeah, I mean, they put themselves in the window with that win over Rome, uh, Roma back in, uh, I think it was October, September time. I hammered them at home. They, they just count, they, they, they scored early and then they countered on them just. Time and time again, um, I think. I mean, yeah, as you see, I think four four of the players that started in that game are, are, have moved on. Um, Patrick Berg is a was a huge, huge part of offense and defense. Like he was very, very good defensive transition. He was very, very important stopping counter attacks at the source, um, and also quick forward passes and in, in, in wide areas and strikers and deep passes. He was very, very good. So they're going to miss him. He's off to Lons. Um I mean, Boulder have got some really good money this winter. There's absolutely no doubt that the club is sorted for the foreseeable future with the transfers they brought, uh, transfer money they brought in for Berg. I think it was, I think it was around three and a half million euros. I think Botheim uh, has gone to Krasnodar in Russia for about six, seven million, apparently rising to about 10 million euros. And um, Maris Lode has gone to Schalke. I'm not, I don't think it was as much for him. It was maybe about one and a half, one million euros. Um, Bjork, Frederick Bjorkan has gone to Hertha. He was a free transfer. Um, but yeah, they've got brought in some great, great money. 
Um, they've not spent a lot on transfers. They don't. They won't because um, uh, yeah, it's, it's best to it's better to put money into the youth system. Put money. I think they're building a or they're, they're not building, but there's plans for the new. Stadium. Yeah, not my thing. Uh, there's plans for a new stadium as well. Okay. So um, yeah, the the money they've brought in in the last year, or two years, has been absolutely fantastic for transfers. And as you say. European football is, is a window f- for the rest. I think um, Sol back in was linked to the Galatasaray in the mm-hmm. winter. It didn't quite materialise, but I think he's probably looking at a summer move. Um, and there's, there's there's a lot of sort of 20 to 23 year olds uh, around the, the team that are have seen their teammates going for some good moves that they'll definitely be interested in. Like you mentioned uh, Sol back in, I think he might, again, I, I'm only going briefly for what I've looked at Bodo and he could be one of the major threats, if not the biggest threat to Celtic. Um, I know he's very, very technically good. He's quick. Um, again, I think when the draw was made for me personally, I didn't want Bodo because obviously I knew they'd still have Patrick Berg, they'd bought him, guys like that. And I'm just thinking this is a very, very tough tie, especially going over to the Arctic Circle when it's this time of year, it's cold. And I know it's cold in Scotland, but it's cold in Norway, let's be fair. Um, it's going to be cold. And I know people say that doesn't have an impact, but for me it would, because I don't fancy playing in minus eight or minus ten, whatever it's going to be. I don't fancy that. Um, so, but for me, the draw of David for me when they first came out, because the players were roughly still kind of there, I was thinking this is going to be a tough tie. I didn't, I didn't want them. I thought it was easier ties to a degree. Um, but I think we obviously be seven, two or three of top players. It's, it's an easier task, but I think as you mentioned, it's still. The same formation, the same manager, I've been about the same players, so there might not be much of a change, and maybe Celtic fans might anticipate because of so many players. Yeah, I mean, there won't be a change in the system. They'll play a four-three-three. They will look to press high when they lose the ball, but then get back in the shape if they if they don't manage to win it back. So back in is so back in is the main threat, um, and he didn't actually play the friendly the last week, and there's a potentially could miss the Celtic uh, the game on Thursday. Um they're hoping he's going to be okay. Um yeah, he's quick, he's direct, he's got good feet, um good finisher as well. He's improved his finishing a lot, left footed. Um he's a big danger. Probably would play in the left uh, the right wing coming in off that side. Um but yeah I think well Patrick Berg's replacement will be a uh, young, like 20, 19, 20 year old Elias Hagen. He'll just play the same role Berg played. He's not quite as good as Berg. He's, pro- he's maybe as good on the ball, but off the ball, he's not quite as good. Um, but apart from him, like uh, the striker, Boniface, will probably play. He's young. He's been there. He was injured last year, but he's very, very talented, um, strong, uh, good link player. I don't think he's a he's not a downgrade on Botheim, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> as for the, the centre centre back as well, Maris Lode is gone, but Maris Hybrotten played most games last year when, when Mo uh, Lode and Moore were injured. So Hybrotten again not a downgrade. Um I say the left back is Bjorkan's probably the biggest loss uh, mm-hmm. going into the start of the season. We're a little bit unsure who's going to play there. Uh, they, signed, they signed a boy from Sandefjord called Bryce Wembangomo, and he played right back for Sandefjord last year, but it looks like he's been playing left back in the pre-season friendlies uh, out in Spain, and he, apparently he's, he's looking he's looking pretty good, sort of both two-footed, can go either way, and um, it looks like Wembangomo will play left back quick, very quick attacking fullback. Um, so system will be the same, it's just whether or not uh, they've they're up to speed and whether or not they've just been lacking that line, little bit of quality. And if so back in injured, that that's a, that'd be a big blow. So as you said, at the moment, it's a, a pre-season. Um, how do you think the preparation will be? Because obviously pre-season, similar to Celtic, with Celtic playing these qualifiers at the start of the year, no matter who we sign, we're never up to top shape because obviously we had the, the Scottish League's run and how much a breath you get, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how are they looking recruitment wise and obviously do you are they prepared for this game because they, it's so kind of they're not they're yeah. not really match fit in their season but i'm sure like anybody you played yourself i think once you're in that competition zone 
I think maybe adrenaline as well will take over and maybe your glasses yeah. maybe as more as you maybe shouldn't because of your fitness. Yeah, I mean, uh, they've known about the tie as well since sort of December, so it's not like it's coming, like when when, when uh, the summer football debate gets brought up, um, and a lot of the problem is that it ha it's the games are so soon after the end of the season that it's really difficult to, to, to rest and go again sort of thing. So I think they've had they've had a, a break um, at the end of December and very sort of first week in January, and then they've been training since sort of yeah second week in January the last sort of three weeks ish maybe yeah they've been out in Alicante doing some uh, sort of warm weather training I think they'll be I think they'll be fit they'll be very fit they'll, they'll have trained trained well they've played three training games against uh, Dynamo Kiev and Elfsborg from Sweden and Aarhus from Denmark so uh, they've got the three games in their legs uh, they've had some good training, I think. Uh, obviously, they won't. I don't think they'll be quite up to one hundred percent speed, but I, I, I don't think it'll be too much of a, an issue. Uh, I think Molde last year were in a similar position. They'd got through to the the, the latter stages of the Europa League, mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of people thought, "Oh, they're coming off like, a big break," and then they beat Hoffenheim. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't see it being too much of a problem. You know, they're, they're very professional and. Uh, they should be should be fit, and they've been really looking forward to the game. So I don't, I don't see there being too much of an issue. As you say, obviously, maybe somewhat to Celtic this season. Um, but the recruitment's been spot on. As you say, they've kind of they've kind of done no really spent as much money, but they're getting guys in for a bit of value, shall, shall we say? Because um, obviously for us, as Celtic, the value we've got, I think we've seen seventeen players since the summer. Um, I think it's probably 16 million we've spent, I think, roughly. Mm. I may be wrong, but I think I seen that on the accounts the other day. And for me, some of the players we've got, I like to think they'll go for double at least what we're bottom from, um, especially the boys from Japan that we're seeing. Um, but obviously in Norway, how's, how's the Bodo fans reacted to the recruitment? Obviously losing two or three star players. If, like yourself, you say these guys might be able to just step in and just not really be... The standard that was there, but they might be able to come in and get to that standard because they've played in the yeah. system and they've been through that way. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I, I don't, I'm not sure how many of the new signs will start on them um, on Thursday. So they signed a striker, Runa Respiord. They signed him from Tromsø. Well, they signed him from Hedenveen, but he was on loan at Tromsø mm -hmm. and he'd been at Tromsø before. Big rival Tromsø in Boulder, so there was a bit of a, a bit of. A, yeah, so bad blood uh, when that transfer went through with the Trump mm -hmm. fans, they weren't so happy. Um, I don't think he'll play though. I think Boniface will play up front, and he has been there for a few years now. Just a, but he missed all of last season with a knee injury, so it'll be interesting to see who starts up front. But I think it will be Boniface. Um, and in defence, they've signed a boy from Bran called uh, Jaffet Larson. Uh, he looked really good with Bran last year when he played. Um, but again, I don't think he'll start. I think he's probably not quite ready. Um, and yeah, they've got Mo, uh, got Mo in who he brought them, so I don't think Larson will start. And then, um, and uh, they've signed a boy from Sarpsborg as well called Gauta Vetti. Uh, talented midfielder, didn't play a lot last year again with injury problems with Sarpsborg. But um, yeah, so the recruitment's interesting. It's young, young players who mm. could fit into the system. But I just think that Wim Van Goma will be the only one that starts uh, on Thursday. I think uh, I think the rest of the team will have been there for at least since uh, last summer uh, when they signed um, Pellegrino, who will probably play left wing, and um, Gilbert Com uh, Coomson, who might play if Solbach is injured. So I think um, it's similar, I don't know if it's maybe the, the attack and way both teams are playing or the way they want to play. It seems to be, especially at Celtic, and for what you're saying about Bodo, it seems to have a lot of young players playing in the teams. I don't know if that's because they're maybe quicker, sharper, more athletic, I don't know, but especially here at Celtic, the way Andrew's trying to play, it's really about maybe 25, 26, maybe younger, the guys who are Going to come in and have an instant impact and no kind of project signings like we've had in the past at Celtic, where guys like Kamara and Bio, they were signing to know where they come in and play. But I think by the sounds of it, by what you're saying with Bodo and for here in Celtic, 
it's guys who just want to kind of have an instant impact and play because I don't think you can really have projects anymore. I think the guys need to come in and play. I think there's only so much projects you can have in football. I think they need to come in and play because sometimes you waste money on guys who might not get up to that standard of play. Yeah, and I think there is a big succession plan and similar with Scotland as as Norway, maybe not so much Celtic as as like both well, agreed, but mm. it's such a succession plan. You have you have to plan for players leaving because if they do well, they're going to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, the last, like last winter, they lost their front three. Uh, they had to replace them. The, this winter, they've lost four players that they have to replace. And if they do well again in the first sort of three months of the season, they'll probably have to replace another two players. So, mm-hmm. it, it is a succession where you have to be signing players who you expect can fit into that role either now or in a few months' time when, when, uh, when somebody else leaves so yeah the thing with Knudsen is he, he doesn't rotate a lot so mm-hmm. so he doesn't need a big squad um and there is some good young players there um that I played quite a bit last year um sort of games that were already won they were brought into or or maybe if there was an injury they were just playing he's, he's very willing to put in young players if he as long as they know the system which mm-hmm. they do because the second team, I think the second team for Glint plays in the fourth tier, uh, and they'll be playing. They're playing the exact same system, and uh, <clears throat> they're just ready to ready to come up if they're called upon. So I think um, they they have spent they have brought in quite a lot of young players in the last uh, year and a half, um, and I think this year hopefully we'll see a few more of them uh, as well. Similar to, I think that's similar to Celtic as well. Um, our start of the recruitment is getting a lot better this year. There's a plan in place. Obviously, last year, we all know what happened last year. There was no real plan, I don't think. Um, I think this year there's a plan under and I think Celtic fans are trusting the way we're going about, especially in European football. Sometimes, well, not that, I wouldn't say we're, we're Whitten boys, but sometimes teams just get Celtic now and they think, oh, that's it, the ties won. Mm. Um, yeah. But I think maybe since Hans came in, obviously with the games in Leverkusen and Betis and stuff like that, I think maybe teams are starting to take note, to, take note sorry, in the way Celtic are trying to play. Um, and that's why I'm really I'm really anticipating two brilliant games here because the two teams might cancel each other out. As you say, they play 4 3 3. They basically play a similar system. Um, I know it's, it's it looks like a 4 3 3, but it's just attacking football. And like you say, it's. It's going to be interesting. I think um, in terms of the tap and play, I think it will be a good spectacle for European football. I think football in general to see two teams that won't sit off and just play total football. I think that's the way but I'm getting through you about Bordeaux and it's the way we're getting here that it's just constant non-stop counter-attack football. Yeah, and I think it'll be a nice wee change. It's a, it'll be a nice change for both teams. Like Bordeaux came up against a lot of low blocks last year. Uh, very, some very very defensive football from some teams sort of like six and four almost and i know celtic have come up against that quite a few times this year as well and mm-hmm. um, they won't do that and um, they will sit in a four five one defensively but it doesn't it's not a it's not a low block by any means and um, they, they always keep their sort of front three pressing that pressing the defenders the 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 yeah so it's designed for quick counter, like mm. quickly getting five players on the counter. So th- there's no point in dropping in too deep, otherwise it's too difficult to counter. So yeah, it will be nice for both teams. I think Glebe came up against a lot of low blocks. Celtic are coming up against a lot of low blocks this year. Um, and yeah, th- that won't be the case. It should be should be interesting. I mean, Celtic, I think just to go back to sort of like European football and, and how teams p- portray like Celtic and that. And I think like Rangers last year were there running Europe. Um, I think it took up, made a lot of people respect Scottish football a little bit more. And obviously Celtic improving this year so much. And I think Rangers, Rangers and Celtic have sort of raised the bar again in the last year, particularly. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that's to do with like, obviously Rogers initially and then Gerrard. And now it looks like Postacoglu as well is, is uh, step three, uh, Celtic forward and I think both Rangers and Celtic I mean you can see by the league um how far ahead they are mm-hmm. the two of them 
they seem to have taken a big step forward in the last couple of years. Um, and I've watched quite a few games from, from Scotland, and especially in this winter when there's been no Norwegian football. And I have to say, Celtic have looked really, really good um, from what I've seen. Um, it's been really, really good to watch. Actually, really good football to watch. I've enjoyed watching yeah. them, which is, um, which is. I mean, that's that's all you can say about it. Really, I've really enjoyed watching how how they've been playing, and uh, really noticeable. Um, O'Reilly and Hatati, the way they play, it's really similar to how mm -hmm. uh, Norwegian sort of inside midfielders play, like oh, really right. into that into that sort of hole between the winger because. Quite often you see nowadays like wingers sort of coming in, but yeah. like Celtic play really high wingers, and it's the same with same with Glimp. The, the wingers play pretty wide, pretty high, and it leaves that space for the sort of inside midfielders to 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 break in between the fullback and the centre back. Something that Norwegian football seem to really like tactically, yeah. and it looks like Celtic are do something really similar. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it, how it sort of who comes off uh, best on Thursday. Especially as well, Celtic. In most games these days, they're playing the inverted fullback, um, which when they first started doing it, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, I thought that they were leaving a lot of space for the wingers or the guy who's playing right or left mid with a lot of too much space and too much time. And then there was a lot of space where, like, for, for an example, you've got Abada and y y Janovic are right back. I thought Janovic sometimes was too much to do, maybe too many against him because Abada's all the way up the park and then he's away in the park so mm -hmm. but i think now they're starting to get used to the system and some of the football is well, back here in scotland i think some people are outside of celtic are really surprised um and they can't believe how quickly they've rebuilt and stuff like that but for the early stages of when we me as a fan you can see what he's starting to do um i don't think he's going to i don't know what the manager's like in bodo but it's with Ange, I don't think he's going to move his, his philosophy. I think it's either if it fails, it fails, but if it works, then it's my way and, that, and that's it. I don't think he's going to change his, his system. Um, I've only really seen him change it once, and it was St Johnston, and he moved to a back, a back three, basically, with, with two winners. And it's only to, to I've really seen him change. I don't think Celtic will change much. Um, I don't know if that's the way Bodo will do, but are they really the same? Yeah, I've, I've never seen them. I've in all the, the three years I've watched them, I've never ever seen them play in a different formation. So yeah, I don't think it, they, they will. To be honest, I think that bodes well for the game, and then I think it'll be a, a maybe cat and mouse, or you'll tap your tap. Um, and obviously, as you say, is, um, they've won the they've won the league last two years, that right? You said they've won the league, yeah, yeah last two years. Um, yeah. So they're obviously in good form. They're confident. Um, so I I really do anticipate a, a hard match for Celtic. I know some Celtic fans, if, if, if we were to go by the, the bookmakers, Celtic are 49, their odds on. And for me, I don't believe in that. I, I believe in what I see in the park and what, what I've seen on Bodo and clips of them. I, I'm, I'm anticipating a very tough match, home and away, especially away because obviously the weather, the Arctic Circle, um, I do think it will be a very, very tough game. Yeah, and I think I think Celtic are a bit lucky they got the home tie first. To be fair, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they would have enjoyed going to Bodo first. Uh, it's it's going to be cold. If any of your listeners are going to Bodo, wrap up. It is <laughs> it's going to be cold. It's windy uh, up there, very windy. Um, the air will be cold anyway. Add the wind, um, you'll be freezing. We bring. Warm clothes and some nice gloves and a nice hat, and uh, <laughs> you'll be all right. But like, aye, it's going to be cold, so I, I think Celtic are a bit lucky. They've got the home tie first to get chance to get a lead, um, mm -hmm. because coming coming to Boulder, who uh, I think I think last year they lost they lost once. Uh, the year before that, they won every single home game in the league. So I think yeah, I think that last thirty home games they've lost. Is that uh, an Astro Park? Is that an Astro Park? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Is that Astro? Mm. Um, again, I, I'm not a big fan of the Astro Park personally, but I know obviously with the weather over there, it's maybe it's maybe invaluable that they have Astro Parks because obviously it would be, it would be yeah, decent for a bit of year. Time, was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, nah, I, I, I've really I've obviously played in a lot out here mm. on Astros, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't mind them, I've not got a problem with them, and uh, if it's a good surface, um, 
the Ast- good Astros are pretty good. I like them, mm-hmm. but um, I'm not sure how new it is actually up at Asmira, how new the surface is. Um, but yeah, it'll be cold, and if it like it can get hard if it if it's mm-hmm. like really really cold. So it'll be interesting. Um, interesting to see uh, how Celtic adjust it. It should. Well, I mean, if if the game's close on Thursday and they've got to go to Boulder and do well, mm-hmm. then it'll be interesting. Yeah. Because obviously um, I've spoke about the obviously the positives are very attacking and uh, take are very good. What's the kind of what would you say? Are, are they any weaknesses of any vulnerabilities about them, or are they actually yeah. quite a, a balanced team? They are pretty well balanced. Like they, without Berg, I'm interested to see how they how they adjust on the sort of defensive transition, like being countered on themselves. I think Berg was a huge part of stopping them stopping that. Um. On, and when Bangomo who they signed, he'll probably play left back. I'm not sure how good he is defensively. Uh, he played with Sandefjord last year, who finished, I think they finished 13th or 12th or something, um, played right back for them. And he's a good attacking fullback, but I'm not sure defensively how, how good he is. So uh, Abada, I mean, I've, I've watched, I think, uh, I, watched, uh, I watched the old firm game and I watched who did Celtic play after that? He scored again. Um, can't and, remember who it was. Uh, oh, because I'm on the spot now to go. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I really I'll thank you at all. Dundee United? Nah, it wasn't Dundee United. I don't remember. Never mind. Uh, I was in a bad, like razor mm. sharp. If a bad is playing well, um, when Van Goma could have a tough, tough. Uh, um, Mother, I'm sure. Mother, yeah, Mother, yeah, it was Mother. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. Um, yeah, well, but, uh, talking about Abad and obviously Jota, the two wingers, um, obviously I don't know for you, obviously you've watched a few of the games, but um, for me, I think Jota's a must, it's Celtic next yeah. time. Again, we all know they can, if he's going to go to the best team, Ben is obviously going to come here and do well. Um, I'm, I'm, maybe Jota might be, and Abad, I think Jota, if he starts a game, which I think he will, I think he might be the main threat to Bodo. Um, I do rate Jack and Marcus. I think he's I think he's a tracking big player. I think he'll come good eventually. Um but I think from the Celtic point of view, for me, obviously the midfield, I think I don't want to say there's a standout because they're all playing well. Um but for me attacking wise, I think Jota is maybe the, apart from Kyogo who's injured, I think he's a main threat at the moment. I know a bad is doing well with his goals and contributions, but when Jota comes on to the ball or he comes off of, off the bench. It's just an aura about him and the fans get a lift. I think that's something that if he's playing the first, I think both they might be a main threat to Bodo. Is that side of the park? Yeah, he looks like a real real talent, Jota. Um very technically gifted, obviously. And uh yeah, he seems to have slotted in really nicely in Scotland. He seems to not not mind too much the physical side of the game and yeah, he's, he's definitely Definitely a, a big talent. The uh, right back for Glimt is uh, Icelandic international Alfon Samstead, and he's had quite a, quite a bit of interest, I think, as well in him in the winter. Um, he was always the better defensively out of the two fullbacks. Um, he didn't go forward as much as Bjorkan on the other side. So I think Samstead, yeah, I mean, it'll be a good 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 comp- good battle. I think I think Samstead Samstead's pretty good defensively, to be fair. Um, but yeah, as you say, Jota is—he uh, does look like a very, very talented uh, player. So I think I seen as well. Um, I think it was on Twitter earlier on. Um, I think the goalkeeper for, for Bodo, he says he's seen the game and he's like, "Oh, that was impressive." The game against Rangers. Um, I think he—I I don't know if it's put fear into him, but he did say he was very impressed by him, and I think he's expecting a tougher game now because he's watched the game and he's seen the atmosphere. And I don't know if. Do you, do you, um, I know they're playing in Roma and stuff, but do you think if it's a full crowd and the fans are really kind of up for it, do you think it might put a bit of fear into the Bodo players? Or do you think they're maybe too, that's no really a, a thing against them? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, when you play against a big crowd, it is, like, it is not, not, doesn't scare you, but it definitely, like, you notice it, you notice mm-hmm. it, and you can't like hear yourself think, and you can't talk to each other properly. So, I've never, I never played at Celtic Park, but I did play against Celtic at Hamden, and it's really, it is noticeable um, the noise when there's that many fans. 
So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Heiken is the, the goalie. He's made his debut for Russia, I think, uh, recently. Um, oh, yeah, he's... Yeah, I guess, I mean, for, for a lot of these fans, they've probably, or for the play, the players as well, they've probably watched Celtic before. They've probably watched Old Firm games before. I mean, it's worldwide interest mm-hmm. in Old Firm. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, it, could, it, could, it, could have, it could have an impact, but, I mean... Yeah, as you say, they've been to the Stadio Olimpico and uh, seem to seem to enjoy it, enjoy it there. So yeah, it should be it should be okay, I think. And obviously as well, I think that the Scandinavian kind of regions, Martin Cotton talent, I think it's kind of well known. I think there's a lot, of, as you mentioned, a lot of young players, nineteen twenty, who maybe catching the eye and uh, they're starting to maybe make their way in football. And we well, obviously the signings are bad and guys like that. I think the Norwegian, Denmark, kind of reasons are getting looked at more way for talent and value wise. Um is there any players at maybe Bodo as well as any in Norway that are up and coming you think maybe Celtic or teams of this this side of the, of the content might actually be interesting and think value wise and might be a standout? Yeah, I mean yeah, it's hard to say. I think um I think a big problem is that I spoke, I was speaking to someone who I know who's part of the St Johnson setup and uh, the wages here are, are really good so a lot of the sort of teams in scotland can't a lot of the teams in scotland can't really afford the wages for um a lot of the players like players at the bottom end of the league and stuff are they're on good wages so uh, i think a problem for a lot of the teams in scotland is they just couldn't afford uh, unless the player decided that they saw it as a good stepping stone mm-hmm. i mean um Celtic, hibs just signed two players from Old the green in the winter there but uh they they never played for the well and they might have played maybe one or two games for the first yeah. team but uh, they did most of their work on loan last or on loan all of last season uh both of them and the season before that as well so uh that's the kind of players that that hibs are looking looking at um financial wise i think i mean melkerson who's gone to Hibs looked like a real good talent. But I wouldn't say he's like one of the best talents out here. Like there's a yeah. lot of guys who are playing in the top league who are sort of 19, 20, 21, who could 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 jump over to Scotland and, and do a job. Like I don't think the levels are that different really. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I mean Hard to say off the top of my head. So many of the players have been picked off recently. Uh, I'm not actually sure. Who's, I'm not actually sure who's still here. Uh, there's a guy called Osama Sirawi uh, that plays for Volerenga, who is super, super talented little winger. Uh, I think he's about 20, 21. Um, he's one that has caught a lot of interest. Um, I was very, I was very noisy about Bjorkan being available in the winter. I kind of wanted Celtic or Rangers to take a punt on him and just so I could see somebody like him in Scotland. Um, he's a left back and he's going to Hertha Berlin instead. Uh, he would have been absolutely ideal, I think, for for left back slot at Celtic in particular, who kind of needed one. Um, who else is there? I mean, yeah, there, there is plenty, there's plenty of talent and I think the thing is, it gets taken so quickly. Like you've got six months. If somebody has a good six months, yeah. they've gone, and that's it. Like especially now, like I was saying to you before the before we went live, that post Brexit, it seems like Norway is a good market for for British uh, clubs. Scotland, Scottish clubs um, can look at Norway, and I don't think there's the same uh, red tape that the rest of Europe's got at the moment. Obviously, yeah. Norway's not in the part of the EU, so uh, yeah. Um, I think I think in the next couple of years you might you might see quite a few more. There's obviously been so Sondra Solberg Johansson, he's gone to um Motherwell. Um and uh, Bear, uh Runa Hauge and Melkerson are at Hibs. And mm-hmm. uh, it will be interesting to see. I think there'll be more. I think there'll be more in the summer maybe. And if not the summer then in the next year or two, I think we'll definitely see quite a few more uh, coming over from Norway to Scotland. Um, it, Scotland's a great window. If you want to, mm-hmm. if you want to go to Scotland, what an opportunity to, to go to England after if you do well. Like that's, it's, it's, it's a great mm-hmm. opportunity. 
uh, if he can do it. And I think um, I think they'll, they're seeing the talent that's out here and, and taking notice. There's also South in the past, so Johansson, Shevchenko, they've had guys from that type of um, region. And brought back. Uh, he brought back as well a long time ago. Um, and, I, and I thought Johansson for me was superb for Celtic. I know he had a wee spell where he didn't really do well, but um, I thought when he signed, I don't think he signed for mega money either. No. Um, I know, I know Dyer, you know, maybe he was uh, the luck to come to Scotland, but I was impressed with, with Johansson and it just shows you that there's talent everywhere. Yeah, and it doesn't Norway. cost much. Yeah. Um, it doesn't like Patrick Berg went for like three and a half million euros. And I'm honestly he is he's top level golden midfielder. He is really, really good. I know before he went to where's he went again? Um let Lons. Lons. Yeah. I know there was rumours about him going to Celtic, but again I don't know how strong they were. I think it was just agents putting things out, I don't know, but yeah. There's a lot of Celtic sites like who do like tactical stuff and breakdowns, mm. and they were all really saying Celtic need to get this guy. They're saying mm. everything is his press, attack and play, just I all the stats and numbers for his yeah. value was phenomenal. Um, yeah. I don't think Anne's possibly probably looks at Celtic's Twitter, but um, <laughs> I think if he did, I think I if Man's was dead, I know. Um, <laughs> but I think if maybe some of these guys who do do work like that off Twitter, yeah. um, for me, Patrick Bell was a standout, and like you say, he's a three million pounds. A few years in the group chat, we're even talking about like, we can't believe he went for that amount of money. Obviously, that's not a lot of money for a guy with his, his, the, the talent and the stats. And like, obviously, these days, you're probably yourself, David, that stats is a big thing now in the yeah. scouting because obviously, mm. we, we all know you can look at a player and go, yeah, he's good. But I think stats and video evidence tell you a lot yeah. more now than just your, your old man. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's a definitely a combination, but I think it probably starts with the stats now. They look at the stats, mm-hmm. pick out players, and then go, right, we'll need to go and look at him. I think that's yeah, that's a huge part of it, as you say. And Berg Berg showed up very well in uh, a lot of important sort of holding midfielder statistics uh last year and uh the last two years. I think he was I think he was the player of the year last year in the latest series, and I think he was voted player of the year. Um, for me, he's been the most important player for them in the last two years, and that's including guys who have scored tons and tons of goals for them. So yeah, I think Berk um, is, is an example of the type of player that you can get for here for really good value. I've got a few questions as well. Um, somebody asked, who who do you think will win that main league? Um, do you think Bodo will be a shoe in for it, or do you think because I've maybe lost two or three players? Maybe some more teams challenging. Yeah, be, I think it'll be close again. It was close last year, in fairness, for most of the season. I think uh, Molde fell away just towards the end and Bode just kept grinding at results. In fact, there was a time, I think Bode played Molde in Molde about six, five, six games to go and beat them. And that kind of confirmed that they were going to be champions mm-hmm. again. Uh, I think I think Molde will be good again. And I think the Rosenborg should be a little bit better this year. They've got a new manager. Um, should be should be a bit more organised, um, yeah. And uh, to be fair, like Bode, Bode will, yeah. I, I think Bode will probably be just favourites, but I think it will be tight. Yeah, I think it will be uh, Bode, Molde, Rosenborg, maybe Lee Listrem, maybe Volleringa. There's like f- four or five teams that should mm. uh, should definitely have a run at it. So obviously you mentioned Rosenborg. What obviously I don't know then and outs on Norwegian football and. I know for a while they were kind of the top dog. What's that actually happened to them? Is it financial reasons? Is it just why? Is it maybe is it somewhat to Celtic where they've maybe went still in a way? Of yeah, just a bit of mismanagement. So I think mm-hmm. uh, poor, poor transfer strategy for a few years. Um, managers that weren't quite up to the level. Um, yeah, I mean financially they're still the biggest club uh, support wise as well. Uh, yeah, I don't think they, they, they've. I mean, even last year they they were pretty poor. Last year uh, they finished fifth, I think, at the end, and um, yeah, they were really poor for most of the season. So they've got a new manager in uh, this year, a guy called Sheti Rektal, who got promoted with Ham Cam uh, this just there into the top league, but he's left Ham Cam, gone to Rosenborg. 
a former Wolverine manager. He won a title with them. He won the cup, I think, with all the students. And he won, he's been in Germany uh, managing as well with Kaiserslautern and someone else, I think. So mm-hmm. plenty of experience. And I think he'll bring Rosenborg back up to, to a better level. Um, I just think like before Rosenberg were by far the biggest club and then Molde got a bit of investment. Molde got a lot of investment from a local guy who's like a multi multi millionaire. It put Molde uh, in a better spot. And um just recently Bode this last two years, Bode with Knutson in charge has just taken that to an extra level. Like it's not been a financial thing from Bode, it's just been pure football based and um mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's, it's Rosenberg have just struggled to keep up with that. But I think uh, I think I don't think they've they've not got any financial problems, and I don't think they'll they'll be too far away this year. Because obviously, um, we all know a few years ago they signed Bentner, and that was obviously a big reaction. I don't know how it was in Norway, but um, he's obviously a guy who, for a long time, had a lot of talent. But we don't know why he's maybe not done what he's he's done. But was, I don't know really much. But was he a was he a failure to the Rosenberg fans? Yeah, uh, nah, well, I mean. He was a bit frustrating towards the end. Uh, he, he was top scorer in the league uh, in his mm-hmm. first year. Um, he didn't score. He didn't score that many goals, but he was top scorer in the league. I think it was like fifteen or sixteen. Um, so he did all right the first year, but I think he, he just kind of faded. You know, he, he, I really liked Bentner when he was young. He, I thought mm-hmm. he was full of talent and loved, like his finishing was excellent. But I just don't think he's. I just don't think he had a big interest in putting like putting the work in to become like the best. And uh, I think it, when he came here, I think his wages were pretty pretty extraordinary for for Norwegian football. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, they, they were glad when the when the time was when the time was up. As you say, uh, financial wise, Rosenberg might be able to pay wages, but. If something if somebody's not really performing, then maybe eventually it's going to let you go um, and bring somebody maybe for lesser value, maybe can do better. Because um, I he was maybe somebody with Celtic play. I'm sure Celtic played him when he was he was there. Um, he was somebody who I was like, I know he might not be the bit now maybe an Arsenal level, but I thought it was still causing a threat. Um, I think Celtic beat Rosenberg. I think he beat three one over there. Yeah, they did. Um, that was that. I was at the game. Yeah, um, and I also thought Rosenberg back here. It was more Rosenberg. Uh, they were not Rosenberg anymore, in a way, But I still thought even the better there. I thought he could still cause us a bit of hassle because I know he might not be playing well at the moment. But t- talent doesn't lead you. You've, you've yeah. still got that in you. So it could that could have been a game where. They thought, you know what? I'm sure I turned up with you. <laughs> um, yeah, that was but, quite a poor Rosenberg team, to be fair. I think. Uh, Aye, they, they were really struggling at that at that point, I think. But yeah, I think uh, financially they can afford good players. I just they've signed a lot of sort of older players recently, which has been a really, really poor recruitment strategy. Uh, I think this summer, this winter, sorry, has been a little bit better. They've signed quite a few sort of younger players. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they pick up a little bit. As I say, I'm about an hour away from 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 Rosenborg. Um, it's home stadium, so I did. I, I was at both Celtic games because Celtic played. I think, I think it was the year after they drew 0 0 after yeah. beating them at home. Uh, they just comfortably held out 0 0. Um, so yeah, I, I do. I try and go to Rosenberg games when I when uh, when I get an opportunity. But uh, yeah, the last last well, obviously with COVID, the last two years it's not been it's not been ideal. But oh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, it would be nice to have them at a good level again, so I could go and see some European games, uh, like proper proper good European games. Yeah, another question as well. Um, what Bogum asked, who who's standout players for you personally, and obviously in Norway of the OBOS Legan last year, and who do you think will be kind of the guys that might maybe move forward from that league? Um, yeah, there's quite a few who have already moved. Um, one of the best was a guy called Taufik Ismail, who was a Nigerian boy. I think he's about 20, 21. Um, I think he might be born... I think he might have been... No, nah, I think he's born in Nigeria and then moved here. But yeah, he, he's a really talented winger. Lorient uh, signed him in the winter. Um, he's back on loan at Volleringa. So he, it'll be interesting to see how he, how he does up a level. Um. Also, who else did we have? We have um, 
there's quite a few. There's there's one still playing in the old boss called Iman Markovic, who's I think he's like he's Norwegian born, but I think he's like mm-hmm. Norwegian Bosnian, uh, sort of midfielder. He looks really good. I'm interesting to see what happens with him. Um, he's about I think he's about 22, but yeah, it's I, with the old boss. It is, I mean, it's quite the level with the old boss. I, I think it's quite similar, probably maybe to sort of. I think the top half is like top half championship, but then the bottom mm-hmm. half more like League One. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's quite hard to tell. Like I got a season ticket for one of the teams in the Obos, um, oh, yeah. just a local team, sure, that was Blink. Uh, they, they finished, I think, they finished third from bottom last year in Obos and stayed up in the playoffs. So I did watch quite a few games last year uh, and quite, saw quite a few players. Um, actually, Sam Rogers just signed for Rosenborg this week uh, from Ham, Hammer Camera after that. Uh, so he he was one of the sort of central defender. Uh, he was playing there last year. He just signed for Rosenborg. Um, apart from that, yeah, um, it gets again. It gets picked up quickly if you're a young family yeah. player. No boss, you're you're up in elite. You see, and there's a boy called Sievert uh, Mans Sievert Manswer who signed for Molde last year. He's like 18. He looks very good. He's very, very talented sort of midfielder. It'd be interesting to see how he I think he'll do really well this year. He could be he could be one to keep an eye on for uh, for next season. Is it that's something in, in kind of previous podcasts about transfers and recruitment? Me and a few of you guys have spoken about that. Well, me personally. I obviously now Andrew may be doing a lot of recruitment. But years gone by with a scouting system and etc. I thought that area, region, Norway, Denmark was Somewhere, I, mean, I thought there was talent and value. Um, like you say, there's guys maybe 18, 19 that maybe the Celtic Avengers or even Aberdeen that can maybe be looking at and picking them up for, let's be fair, now to nothing compared to what Celtic mm. do pay some, some transfers or some players who come here and don't really do very well. Um, do you think maybe Celtic Rangers, obviously, depending on what their transfer strategies are, do you think they maybe should be looking at that type of region more because, as you say, 17, 18, 19. Before they get to that, maybe Bodo Glump, mm. Rosenberg, let go and they play week in, week out and get more notice. You think you should maybe scout them a bit more into their, kind of, their background a bit more? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think uh, I think Norway and Sweden and Denmark, there's a huge culture of sport out here. Mm. Like, it's, it's, sport is just so important. <laughs> I mean, the Winter Olympics is going on just now, and you'll see Norway and, Norway and Sweden in particular right at the front of uh, things. There's a lot of talented sports people out here. I mean, Norway have got one of the best footballers in the world just now with Holland and then Odegaard as well. And at Arsenal, like the talent in Norway is definitely there. Sweden, Denmark as well. And it it is a lot cheaper than a lot of the European markets. If you can get, I mean, it's I, I do think there will be a sort of that there has been a little bit of a movement towards here. Like a lot of players are moving to the Netherlands and Belgium. There's been a few that have gone to Italy recently as well. Um, I think there's, a, there's about two or three or four Norwegians playing in Serie A just now. Um, so yeah, I, I do think it is a good it is a good place to 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 shop, especially just now before the prices start going up. As you mentioned, uh, Haaland, he's obviously maybe one of the best strikers, if not the best at the moment. Um, take away obviously guys like Lewandowski. Also, Rangers are playing uh, Dortmund and. I don't know if he's going to be fit or no, but um, it's, I've only seen clips of him and when he's played, but um, do you think he's going to be, the, I know he has a real deal, but do you think he's going to be the real deal for years to come? Yeah, I think I think him and Mbappe will be the two sort of strikers going forward that everyone's just going like, oh, I see he's scored 50, mm-hmm. 50 league goals again, 50 goals again this year. I think, that, I think Holland and, uh, yeah, Holland is definitely... Uh, yeah. Going to be one of the the best, if not the best, striker in the world when uh, probably in the next two years or so. But yeah, I think he's injured. I, I spoke to someone earlier today. I think he's injured for the the Rangers game on Thursday. Because obviously, um, as you said about the money situation, I know Norway's maybe it's more like maybe better wages and but I think to live it's a bit more expensive. I don't know if that's the way it's what it is over there. But um, seeing it comes to like match tickets and season books and stuff how's how's it how does it compare to scotland because obviously celtic I think I don't I know. Know. <laughs> that was about 600 pound right for a season book right so yeah. how is it how is uh type of 
the football and way in Norway is it cheap to get the football and stuff as it as it's quite expensive? Uh, I think I think it is quite expensive to go and watch Rosenborg. Um, I got a season ticket for sure out of Blink, which is the second tier, mm-hmm. and it cost me one thousand five hundred kroner, so that's just about one hundred and thirty quid. Um, that's for like fifteen home games. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, less than less than a tenner for a game. Uh, Rosenborg, I think you're looking at more like sort of. 30, 35 quid for a match ticket. I don't know how much a season ticket costs. Like, I would never mm-hmm. pay a season ticket. Um, it's a bit too far away. Um, but, yeah, I, I've, I've been to, like, the, recently Rosenborg's crowds have been a bit poor, like, obviously, with mm-hmm. their form dropping. Um, I went to a European game three years ago, maybe. It was a Europa League qualifier or, or a Champions League qualifier. I can't remember. Um, and it was, like, a hundred kroners, like yeah, eight nine quid. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't remember who it was against. It was against a team from like Serbia or something like that, and it was just yeah, it was like full stadium, ten quid a ticket. That's that's how it should be, <laughs> really. But yeah, I think I think prices are pretty similar at, at the top tier for for single match day tickets. Because I think for the game first, I think it's I think it was like thirty pound. Roughly because the game which I thought was actually quite reasonable because I had a big good game and I had one board or or no mugs, so I didn't mind it. But I seen Rangers were charging forty three pounds if I used Dortmund and I thought that was ridiculous. Um but it's again, it's... football fans, I don't understand how football fans can afford it, honestly. Like when I was playing and people used to follow I mean, I wasn't even playing the top level, I was playing the championship and people followed home and away. I just can't I can't understand how people can afford it, honestly. <laughs> it's something it's something I've actually put myself. I, I go to my home games but because of my work I do shift so you can always get the games. But you see some fans when home away and I'm thinking that's a lot of dough. Um yes. I do go to some away games in Europe myself and it does cost a lot of money, but um I, I'm just interested in like how obviously you played in Scotland, so you know roughly how much tickets cost for each from the level and stuff. Do you think that's something maybe they need to look at in Scotland? Is obviously for me the family I think obviously the Celtic Rangers games are always going to be 45, 50 quid. I think that's never going to change anymore. But do you think maybe can they do in the league? Do you think they need to kind of look at the way they kind of give fans a bit more value for money? Yeah, yeah. I don't think a ticket for League League One, League Two should be more than ten quid. Mm. Like, I don't see why it should be. I think you'll get casual fans coming, and I would like I would pay a ten out to watch a game of football with League One, League yeah. Two, no bother. Um, uh, Championship similar, like fifth. 15 quid max like i know when i played a full cup i think tickets were like 20 22 quid 24 quid or something just for the like, i wouldn't pay that to watch me put it out <laughs> uh, but yeah nah, i mean i think 10 quid for the lower league two leagues 15 quid sort of capped at the championship i don't and like even even 15 quid for the premier premiership like i i just think you'll get more fans in the door and it'll be a better experience i just don't understand why they have to charge so much and obviously you mentioned about fan experience, you've been to a few games yourself in Norway. Um, how, how is the fan experience in Norway today? Is it, is it a good atmosphere in the yeah. stadium? Is it, is it all right, aye? Yeah, I mean, Lekendal, like the Rosenborg Stadium, it is a good atmosphere. Like they've got, obviously, they've got the, the sort of TIFOs behind the goal and the, the sort of singing section and stuff behind the goal. It's, it's pretty good. Like they, 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 there is a lot of, I think, like families go to the games and stuff. So. Yeah. Where I sit is not so not so much like where I would sit is not so much singing and stuff. But yeah, to be fair, it's a good atmosphere. And like, if the stadium's full, I've been at a full stadium there before. That is that is that is really good. It's a really nice stadium at Rosenborg, and it is a it is a good atmosphere if if it's a full stadium. And obviously, I know you mentioned obviously about, about COVID and stuff. How is that affect? I know it's affected the Scottish football a lot, but and um, the norway has it, has, it, has it been affected the kind of football a lot with the, the money situation players and um i think it, I'm, I'm guessing though it's maybe kind of hopefully soon it's hopefully it's going to be finished soon and we can kind of get back to more better football as well not just in life but the football can get better um how's it been over there with the, with the, the fans yeah. and all the stadium is getting shut i mean everything was shut uh, so the first year, so that was 2020, I don't think the league started until June instead of April. 
And then they sort of squeezed all the games in with no fans for the mm. whole season pretty much. And then last year, I feel like last year started a little bit late again. And then there was like sort of like 500 fans and then there was like a little bit more mm. and then it went back down to 500 and then, yeah. But like now we're op- now Norway's completely opened up. Yeah, just this week actually finally decided that um, we're just treating it as a normal illness. Mm-hmm. If you've got corona, you've just you're sick, and that's that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, financially, I don't know how much it affected the football clubs. I'd like there's a lot of support from the government, obviously. Um, yeah. But uh, bread bread the football, which is like sort of lower league football, uh, was was effect was cancelled effectively for the whole mm-hmm. of 2020. Uh, and half of 2021 there was no like fourth tier and down there was there was no football there was no competitive football so yeah there was a lot of boys well i think how many footballers like sort of at that tier third third, fourth tier fifth tier sixth tier boys and girls who play football sort of two or three times a week and play at the weekend didn't have that opportunity for a year and a half i think it's just I mean, the effect that must have had in a lot of people's lives. I'm lucky that it wasn't affecting me, but the effect that must have had in a lot of sort of young guys' lives. And I think a lot of people have like given up as a result. Uh, it'll be interesting to see like what happens if there's if there's like a like this one or two year gap of just like missing talent. I don't. It'll be interesting to see uh, like if if in like five six years time if there's just like this gap of talent that's uh, disappeared. <laughs> As you say, I was the same as here, um, kind of the amateur, basically did shut, um, and I kind of thought it was as well that obviously the football, um, could, as you mentioned, was harsh on people's lives and mental as well, how mental health is a big part of playing, obviously, the, the football. Um, but obviously, what's your, as you said, we're back on the football, what's your um, opinions and what you think? Just going to happen in the tie. Um, Jake Shield may have just too much quality overall. Yeah, I think that, I think they might. Uh, I think I think they'll they'll probably beat them on uh, Thursday, and I think they'll just have just have a little bit too much quality for them over two legs, uh, and probably just a little bit more sort of uh, match condition as well. Um, so I think yeah, I think over two legs, Celtic will probably just have too much for them. As I say, David, it's been fantastic to speak to you. Um, knowing about, again, Bodo a bit more. Um, because obviously back here, we can all go by YouTube and Twitter and kind of reports. And um, for me, it's been quite in- insightful to know more about, obviously, Norwegian football and um, your own experiences from um, Norway. Um, but again, David, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, take care and uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for having me. Thanks, David. Cheers. Bye-bye.